This whole event to commence. I from grassroots race, champion of the rule of law, selling contributions of his excellence by this audience. And the life and time and I want all of you to please. Let me, on behalf of the organizing committee for this occasion, request all of us to be on our seat, on our feet, for a minute silence in honor of Barista Blainyako, who was a member of this committee and who has been called to glory. Please, in silence, let's be on our feet for a minute silence. Silence, please. May the Lord grant him eternal rest. May the Lord comfort his family, needed family. May the Lord comfort our leader, the former vice president, and give them the attitude, the fortitude to bear the loss. Please be seated. Your Excellencies, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure I welcome you to this peculiar gathering that revolves around our great party, the PDP, and our presidential candidate, Atiku Abakar Wazir Adamawa, the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and by the grace of God, the next president of this nation. Excuse me, please. 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 We are in a serious business. Can we be quiet, please? Please, gentlemen, be quiet. Thank you. Let me thank the leadership of our great party, the PDP, for accepting the special arrangement made to manage our time and resources in this event. I welcome you all to, the, to this event of today, which is the presentation of some books that tell the story of the man Atiku. His childhood and formative development, his struggles as an orphan who grew up to overcome the challenges of lack and deprivation to become the political colossus that he is today, a businessman and a philanthropist. These books tell the story of former Vice President Atiku's vision for national unity, growth and development, his role in our country's democratic rebirth during the last military regime, his struggles in deepening of our nascent democracy through judicial faiths and processes which have added value to the body of language in jurisprudence and constitutionalism. Above all, in his book, 
or restructure. He takes us on a broad outline why he thinks it is inevitable in order to address the existing contradictions in our political union as a nation. Your Excellencies, permit me to reveal that the former Vice President Chiku is a shy person and has not, is not too eager at telling his own story, particularly when it is necessary. But like Chenyo Achebe said, and I quote, the story of hunting will always favor the hunter until the hunter becomes the storyteller. There is no doubt that former Vice President Chiku has been a victim has been a victim of this weakness of his of his of his not wanting to tell his own story for long. The consequences or the consequence has been that political openings have cashed on it to spread on four unfounded rumors and cocktail of lies against his person and in the process cause monumental misunderstanding to his public perception. And I dare say that former Vice President Atiku has been the haunted in Nigerian politics. And I want, as a way of testimony, and it is very important, when I was the governor of Adamant State for eight good years, 1999 and 2000 to 2007, two very damaging rumors were going around at that time. One was that I was always sharing money with Vice President Achiko from my security board. But I want to say, and my younger brother, Governor Fintry, is here, I have never in my eight years as a governor taken security vote let alone share it with former Vice President Latifi. I have never. The second damaging rumor during my time as governor and when he was Vice President was that the American University established that it was established or built with Adam money. If I can remember, the, Adama, the American University, Yola, started in 2005 or there about the construction. And I remember to have gone to the site and assessed the buildings that were going on, the constructions that were going on that time. And it was to the tune of almost five billion. Meanwhile, my monthly receipt was within the range of 800 to 900 million. So tell me, at what point was I able to gather over almost 5 billion to give Vice President Atiku to build American University of Yola? I left office 15 years ago. These rumor mongers should also be asked now, how has American University been funded since I left office? Since I, I, I have not been there now for the past 15 years, how has the university been funded? So these are some of the very damaging rumors, lies that we are been paraded around and which had caused and still caused monumental misunderstanding to his perception or to the perception of his personality. Your Excellency, 
There is no other better time than now for Nigerians to know about you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am not the Booker's reviewer. I only welcome you in appreciation of your presence here today. You are most welcome. Enjoy as we watch and listen to the word about Atiku. Thank you very much. For our party, we must call all together as one indivisible people to ensure victory for the PDP. All over the nation, the primaries are over, and it is time to roll our sleeves and walk to ensure victory. Because there is no alternative, and I repeat, there is no alternative to victory. Victory is sweet, and we must ensure victory. So for everybody, the party, we must all come together as one people to work for the victory of not only His Excellency Atiku Abate, but for ourselves. Because without victory, we will be nowhere, and we must rescue Nigeria, whether we like it or not, from the grip and the hands of the APC. So I implore all of us to come together, all our friends and brothers, who are not happy with certain things that is going on, we must come together. There is no alternative to this by the grace of God. Let us come together and ensure victory. With these very few remarks, I welcome you all to the Federal Capital Territory. May God grant us all our heart desires and meet us at the point of our needs. May God Almighty take us back to our various destinations very well as we uh, celebrate this iconic citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much. It's a great day, and all thanks belongs to Almighty Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, who has graciously granted us this day to witness this very important event of presenting the books Atiku Abubakar and the inauguration of the presidential campaign for the People's Democratic Party that will inshallah lead Alaja Atiku Abubakar to the presidential villa, inshallah. There are three books Presented today, the story of Atiku Abubakar, the landmark constitutional laws cases in Nigeria, and restructuring as a pathway to unity and development. My duty today is not to present any paper or speak. I'm chairing the occasion and ensuring that it is properly conducted. But I'm not oblivious of this singular opportunity to take the last paragraph in one of the books. And it says, the Waziri of Adamawa, Atiku Abubakar, is no doubt the most adequately prepared presidential candidate who understands Nigeria's challenges and has the capacity to address them. You can't read this book without appreciating him as a political driver who not only has the experience to drive the car but also knows the road on how to rescue Nigeria. It is very important that at this stage, that from today, the campaign commences for that journey 
it is really important that we all put our hands on deck, cooperate fully with each other, and ensure victory at the end of the day. Let us now relax and listen carefully to the book reviewer, presenters, unveilers, and launchers. Thank you and God bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. It is the sad story of a present day Nigeria and it only exists in the realm and the minds and thoughts and actions of the misgovernance that we all see that is the hallmark of the APC and that is why we are good to go on our marks, set, Michael, Uchenna, Ali, even Nick have all gone overseas seeking for a better future. The last time I called her, she was speaking big, big English. I have tried to get a job with the certificates I spent years, years and years to acquire. But where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? Is this the future? Is this the future we hope to see? I don't think so. I have to end this. I have to end this. Let me end it. Please don't do this. Once there is life, there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Atiku is coming and is bringing light to us. My brother, please don't do this. Please don't do this. Calm down, my brother. He is coming. He's bringing light. He's coming to rescue Nigeria. My, yes, my brother. I'm very sure, my brother. Please don't kill yourself. Please. Chida, but at the National Conference Center. And you can imagine Dino Melaye holding the microphone for me. It's interesting. Um, this is a very important event. The two important things are 
that the man that looks after Atiku's health is from my state. The man that cooks his food is from my state. Which means that this is a true Nigerian. And if you vote him, we're not making a mistake. I was there, he was there yesterday at Enugu and he spoke glowingly about Enugu State and in the whole of Southeast. And he did say, he didn't end up, he said he has three boys from the Southeast. Which means that he's a true Nigerian. We are looking for a true Nigerian president. We are looking for a true Nigerian president who will unite us. And I believe that he alone can do that. He alone, with his vice. His vice president is Ifani Chupu Kukuwa. My name is Ifani Chupu Mwobudu. I don't know what else you are looking for. He's a part of us. And I believe that with Atiku, we will have a united Nigeria. And Nigeria will be united, and you will go where you like. He talked about security. He is, in fact, the only leader who has taken his pen and wrote about Nigeria unity. He wrote about restructuring. Not many people like to talk about restructuring. They say it with, their, with one, part, one part of the mouth and we draw it from the other part. But Atiku took his pen and wrote about restructuring. And if somebody is asking about restructuring, he really wants to be in Nigeria. I, as a rule, don't like to criticize or talk nonsense about the other party. But I think that Nigeria will be better off if we have Atiku as our president. And security is number one. In my state, on Mondays, I can't go to work. I have a, an order to sit at home by young boys who are asked to you must sit at home. And if you don't sit at home, they kill you. And I value life. Life matters to me. I thank God because I fear God. God created us equal, and God has given us right to live. I don't like shedding of blood. And the only way we can get united in Nigeria is by living and in peace. I hope that we will, from now on, with a Tiku era, we will have peace in Nigeria. So go on. This is your time. But remember, as you leave, you hand over the battle to Southeast. I need that undertaken by you. You hand over the battle to Southeast. So I think that this has been a wonderful day. I went to Shida and I was told that the venue had been shifted. And I started looking for Dino Melaye. I caught him and he told me that the, the, place, the, the place to come is here and I came here. I came rather late. Please forgive me. I didn't make a mistake. I came at the right time, but I was mis misguided. But I'm here and I believe that today's event will bring a united country called Nigeria. Thank you very much. Our surgery in the mother, another story, the money for social amenities knew how to use Google Maps, so the money did not have to miss road. In another story, 
The youth refused to take up guns, to steal ballot boxes for the same ones who took food away from their mouths. In another story, the right to life was not a myth. In another story, the voters did not take side with corrupt politicians because they were of the same tribe and the same religion. In another story, we shook loose the grip of the Stockholm Syndrome and every time we untie a tongue, a couple of questions fall out. When will we have a better Nigeria? In another story, we vote with conviction, leaders, competence, with the vision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is to give a review of the four books, actually, that are going to be presented to the public today all written in honor of the man whose time has come, the man for whom we are all gathered here today, namely His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, MSc, GCOA. The books are as follows, and it is in this format, or in this very sequence, that the review will be done. First will be the book titled Atiku, the story of Atiku Abubakar by none other than our late colleague, a member of the Atiku political family, the late Dr. Adinoe Ojo Onukaba of blessed memory. The second book is titled The Landmark Constitutional Law Cases in Nigeria 2004-2007, the Atiku Abubakar cases, written by yours truly with Chudi N. Ojuku LLM. The third is a compendium of the thoughts and the writings of His Excellency Atiku Abubakar himself, titled Restructuring as a pathway to unity and development. Titled also, or in short, the Atiku Abubakar Files. Without much ado, I will take the books, one after the other, in seriatim, as I've mentioned. Beginning with the story of Atiku Abubakar, this book is a compendium or a collection of about three parts of 22 chapters with an epilogue, references, and indexes, all housed in 338 pages. Part one of the book talks about his early life. He was born in very humble circumstances and determined from a young age to take his destiny in his hands. That adversity has taught Atiku to be kind, caring, and compassionate. The loneliness of childhood made him a lover of people and of a large family. The tragedy of being orphaned at an early age instilled in him the virtues of hard work and independence and abiding faith in God. His 20 years career in the customs exposed him to the larger and more complex world outside the one he knew in southern Adamawa. And the politics taught him focus, determination, and the ability to understand, predict, and manage people. He had come at a time when momentous changes were sweeping through the world around him. Young Atiku was quiet, sensitive, a young boy at that time, and assisted his father on the farm and with livestock. Second part of the book gives a glance at way back in his 20 years career in customs where he joined the service as a cadet assistant, preventive superintendent, and rose to the rank of deputy director before his retirement from the Federal Civil Service of Nigeria with effect from 30th April 1989. While in the customs, he attended leadership and management courses in Finland, USA, and Egypt. 
if part three attempts to x-ray his political journey after his retirement from the civil service is captured here. And chapters like the People's Front of Nigeria, Social Democratic Party, the quest to be a governor, a candidate for the presidency, the Abacha Times takes his turn, the Pantom coup, exile, because he was on exile, it's all co contained in the book. A fresh start are all contained in this book from pages 164 to 276. Upon retirement, Atiku went into private business. He soon launched an active political career and was elected as governor of Adama State and later vice president of Nigeria in 1999. He was an elected member of the National Constituent Assembly before then, 1994 to 1995. He is a founding member of the governing People's Democratic Party and before that, a founding member of the People's Front and Social Democratic Party. As vice president, Atiku was the chairman of the National Economic Council and the National Council on Privatization and many other presidential committees, including the task that admirably organized Nigeria's hosting of the 2004 Commonwealth Summit. Atiku is also widely recognized as the committed Democrat and a courageous fighter against executive impunity and the militarization of national politics. I would skip this very part and go to the next, which also talks about Atiku's life as a politician and as a public office holder, as well as some of the experiences he garnered. Atiku Abubakar is also a veritable phoenix of our democratic future. For out of the ashes of despair, brutality, cynicism, and strife of yesteryears has emerged his pillar of freedom, democracy, justice, and hope. The greatness of birth is not in being blue bothered, but it is being able to survive despite all odds. Success is not judged only by what has been achieved, but also by the obstacles surmounted to achieve it. That is Atiku Abubakar in true perspective. He's a fellow of the St. Anthony's College, Oxford University, and in General School of Diplomacy and International Relations, Switzerland. He also holds honorary doctorate degrees from several Nigerian universities. Among them are Amadou Bello University, University of Meduguri, Modi Boadama University, University of Calabar, ETC. He was also bestowed with Nigeria's second highest national honor, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, GCON. He was also awarded the Harris Watford Global Citizen Award by the National Peace Corps Association of the United States of America. Atiku holds the traditional titles, several traditional titles, one of which is the Waziri of Adamawa, as well as the Zege Mule Utif, Zanna Zaltoma of Borono, Zanna Kwashima of Yobe, Shetima of Biu, Moyobero of Lagos, Onyeoha Ndigo of Ibola, ETC. In conclusion on this very chapter of the book, I wish to state that Atiku Abubakar is a politician, a businessman, and a philanthropist. He's also committed to the development of Nigerians of all ages, and he has been consistently advocating for true federalism, passion for the growth, stability, and unity of this country. He is also always committed to promoting ideologies relevant to national integration, quality education, and economic development. Finally, on the book, Atiku, the story of Atiku, I would end this review as follows. This book is a must read for everyone here who is desirous of living and realizing the Nigerian dream as exemplified by the life and times of Atiku Abubakar, the unifier. I go on to the next book. This next book is the one that is titled Landmark Constitutional Law Cases in Nigeria, 2004 to 2007, 
and it is a book on the infractions which His Excellency found out or discovered while he was vice president and he challenged them in court and succeeded. They were all seven in number. In all, these 300 page books has five chapters and a very rich bibliography, a litany of statutes and an appendix both in the cases and statutes. The book is a product of years of research into the cases of constitutional infra infractions and breaches against the person and office of the former vice president, which he challenged and won literally in all the Nigerian courts from 2004 to 2007. And I was privileged to be working with him those years and even attending the court cases, hence, the need to chronicle them into a book. The decision to publish this book, according to the authors, was that it was in recognition of the contributions of the former vice president to the development of democracy and also the fight to ensure the entrenchment of fundamental human rights of all citizens in the country. Thus, these were the words of the Honorable Justice Ahiru Mustafa, a former Chief Justice of Nigeria, on page 3 of the foreword to the book, which says, and I read, unquote, the landmark judgments contained in the seven cases in this book at the instance of former Vice President Atiku justify the title of the book as focus and emphasis was spread across the variety of thorny issues which cover thought-provoking discourse on constitutional democratic governance in Nigeria. No doubt this book is a major contribution to the sustenance and growth of democratic governance in the body polity of Nigeria." Unquote. Accordingly, I wish to call on all Nigerians, especially those of us present here, to commend this key figure, that is, the personal dramatist in the book, Atiku Abubakar, for his doggedness and astuteness in prosecuting these cases, in his quest to defend or stand up for his fundamental human rights when they were infringed upon. The recognition and pride of place being given to him through this book is well deserved, and I'm glad that this recognition is coming from the academia, the bar, and the bench. Now, I'll take up these cases one after the other, and give a brief uh, a summary on what are the themes in the cases. The first case is a case that has to do with the power of removing a vice president in office. It is now through the grace of His Excellency, the former vice president, that no president in Nigeria can ever remove his vice president unilaterally. And this is owed to the Vice President. It is captured in Chapter 2, and it further clearly spells out the constitutional provisions of the President and the Vice President, and that they can only be removed from office by the National Assembly or by the court. It's a joint ticket. They came together, they will live together. And that applies even if the Vice President jumps ship, leaves the party that they came in with and defects to another party. This is the law as of today. In chapter 3, the, the case that was handled or that took place at the instance of the former vice president too was the issue of disqualification of candidates for elections. Ladies and gentlemen, it is also cherry news that is through the work or the fight, dogged fight of His Excellency, the former Vice President and our incoming President, that today, INEC cannot disqualify any candidate in Nigeria. And this is captured in Chapter 3 of the book. In the case of Action Congress versus uh, Action Congress and Atiku Abakar versus INEC. This was the case where prior to the presidential elections of 2007, when Action Congress presented Atiku Abubakar 
as its presidential candidate. INEC, in the process of screening candidates for that election, disqualified him. Consequently, Action Congress and Atiku went to court to challenge the powers of INEC to disqualify candidates. The case commenced from the Federal High Court through the Court of Appeal and ended at the Supreme Court, the Apex Court, where it was ruled that INEC had no power and still today has no power to disqualify candidates for an election pursuant to the provisions of the Electoral Act 2008 then and the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then in Chapter 4, the case also here was a case involving the executive immunity that the president, the vice president, the governors and the deputy governors enjoy. It is also a cherry news that through the instrumentality of the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, in going to court and fighting for the rights of the electorate as well as the elected. Today, the, the, the court of conduct tribunal cannot, during the pendency of immunity of any of these principal officers, attempt to try them. They have no powers because they enjoy their immunity from the day they are sworn in till they serve out their terms. But after serving their terms, they can be subjected for any criminal um, prosecution. So it was true that here, in his defiance to the institution of proceedings against him, when an action was taken against him and taken before the Court of Conduct Tribunal, the vice, former vice president filed an action against the government and questioned the powers of the Court of Conduct Tribunal to try him. The trial court resolved and held that a sitting vice president of Nigeria cannot be tried by the court or tribunal. The appellants, being dissatisfied with the decision of the Federal High Court, appealed to the Court of Appeal, while Atiku Abubakar cross-appealed. The key constitutional questions the Court of Appeal was asked to resolve was whether or not a sitting vice president was bound by the Court of Conduct provisions in the Constitution, regardless of the immunity clause under Section 308 of the same Constitution. Many people have questioned the wisdom of the framers of the Nigerian Constitution, including, in, including this immunity clause in the 1999 Constitution. While the opinions are diverse on the appropriateness or otherwise of the clause, it is important not to lose sight of the purpose of the immunity. Because Section 308 of the 1999 Constitution does not provide an absolute immunity from prosecution, but merely a limited one. That is, until such a person leaves office, in delivering its judgment, the court clearly demonstrated that the Constitution remains the supreme law of the land, and all other laws and legal maxims and provisions are subject to it. Accordingly, all persons in Nigeria have the inalienable right to fair hearing. Now, lastly, Chapter 5. In the case in Chapter 5 was also initiated and supported by His Excellency, the former Vice President, in the case of Godi Ikechi versus PDP. And in that case, the court's decision was to emphasize the need for constitutional and due process, that's political parties, to abide by their party constitutions and the 1999 constitution and not to act arbitrarily. The court forbade the appointment of party members at PDP congresses or conventions through the unconstitutional process of affirmation and selection. The court directed that election must be the only mode of assumption to various offices, and that is what applies till date. In conclusion of the second book, at the end of every meaningful research is the expectation of how the research work will benefit society. Therefore, I hereby read out the takeaways from this book, especially the seven cases. One, it is that it stresses the need for adherence to the tenets of constitutionalism and the rule of law in affairs of both government and the governed. Two, the book also encourages anyone who feels his fundamental human rights have been infringed upon 
to rise and seek redress in the court of law. Three, the judiciary of the three arms is a guardian of the constitution and of democratic process. Okay. Four, also the Nigerian courts of law, being guardians of the constitution, should always rise to their feet to declare any purported infraction of the constitution null and void. So in summary, the historic decisions and judgments by both the Courts of Appeal and the Supreme Court, as contained in the book Landmark Constitutional Cases, the Article of Regard Cases, have since become locus classicus, that is, of legal standing in the corpus juris of our country. I will take on the last book now, which is the book um, titled Restructuring as the Pathway to Unity and Development, the Atikwa Abubakar Files. These, as I earlier said, are thoughts and writings of His Excellency throughout his political career, before and after his serving out his term as a former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from 1999 to 2007. This book contains 18 chapters, including introduction and preface, and is bound and contained or covered in 121 pages. The book is a collection of speeches, papers, and addresses delivered, as well as newspaper publications of the former Nigeria's Vice President, Atiku Abubakar. The speeches and publications span close to a decade of his thoughts. And of, in, of interest to us here is his passion for restructuring. And the very chapter that helps much on the restructuring, when you get a copy of the book, is chapter 12. I will go and read out how he thinks about, what he thinks about restructuring and how he wants to go about it when elected President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 2023. First, he said he has observed that a smaller linear federal government with reduced responsibilities is better than this very one that is skewed in favor of the federal government. This means devolution of powers and resources to states and local governments. State and local governments should control education, health, agriculture, roads and other infrastructure. This aspect is treated under chapter 12 of the book. Secondly, autonomy for the component states and localities to determine their development priorities. Structure, for instance, he said there's no reason for a governor of Akwa Ibom state to earn the same salary as the governor of Benue state or Adamawa state, or for a teacher in Olu to earn the same salary as the one in Abuja or Potakot. The cost, of, because reason, his reason is that the cost of living and revenue generating capacities vary widely according to the country. Of, of interest too is his thought about the fact that enhanced diversified economic activities and productivity in order to enlarge our tax base is a must do in Nigeria. And furthermore, he, his Excellency also believes that an end, there should be an end to the indigenous settler dichotomy. A modern united Nigeria society can only be built on the basis of common citizenship for all based on residency in a state or locality rather than the local government or ethnic group one is born into. Nigerians should be free to live, study and work anywhere in the country as long as they are law abiding. I'll just wind up now, two minutes. So long as they are law abiding. We cannot claim to be promoting national unity while also promoting policies that tend to continue to divide us. Hence, he's been given the, the name, the great unifier. Sixth, His Excellency also believes in the state police. He said, state police should augment the federal police for the states that so desire. This will help in improving security, including fighting terrorism. Posting a police officer from uh, Jada or Ganye to Eket 
may help promote culture sharing and integration, but it does not or it does little to prevent or fight crime. Crime is better fought by those who know the terrain and speak the local language. Nigeria is not working as well as it should, and part of the reason is the way we have structured our country and governance, especially since the late 1960s. The federal government is too big and too powerful, lucrative to the federating states. That situation needs to change, and calling for that change is patriotic, said His Excellency. And finally, I would in conclusion state that these whole three books, which I have adumbrated here, are very germane and they are the thoughts of the author, particularly of this, this last one, the third one, which are his own writings and his own vision for the country. The other two showcase who His Excellency truly is through the dogged fight of cases he did, as well as his historical account from the birth to the present date. So having studied or gone through these books, I fully am fully persuaded that it represents a sound demonstration of high standard of research. Accordingly, I have no hesitation in recommending these books to all involved and interested in the art of governance or leadership. Political scientists, sociologists, academics, students, journalists, lawyers, and indeed to the general public. Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you. Please put your hands one more time for Senior Advocate of Nigeria that the documentary be ready. We'll give you an in the president in waiting and inshallah. <laughs> Where's the use of the, 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 the spoon? Hey, 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 I'm here standing in for the, His Royal Highness, the Lamid of Adam Al Lamid of Ombina, where His Excellency Atiku Abubakar is the Premier, Prime Minister of the Council, and therefore I'm here restricted by the message of His Royal Highness. The message of His Royal Highness, the Lamid of Adam Awa, is that Atiku's victory in PDP is victory for Nigerians. Therefore, the, uh, the land of Adamawa graciously, humbly presented the very articulated Atiku Abubakar to Nigerians for your own uh, savior, because Nigeria needs to be rescued today. We all know what we have been faced with, and sometimes people pretend to ignore what is good, but there are times that it is very, very necessary for us to face the reality. And today is Atiku Abubakar's time, and that we have no option in terms of competence, capacity, and above all, compassion. We all said here, that Atiku Abubakar touches the lives of Nigerians. Including my humble self standing here, Atiku Abubakar has touched my life. And this has happened since the year 2009, when he became vice president. He supported our organization. And today, in that organization, I can say it authoritatively, that we are the leading in oil and gas in this country. This 
at Yuko Abubakar did it for us. So I want to conclude by saying that before this time, it is Atiku was the hope for poor, but today's Nigerian context, even the rich Atiku is your hope. With this, I conclude, and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, ably represented. Our very vibrant PDPU. Here we are joining our principal in the presentation of three very distinguished books. And the first of these books has to do with his biography. I have not read the books, but I have gone through those scantily the little script I found in the program concerning his biography. And what did I get from that? I learned from that little script here in the program that just as the Americans have the American dream, we Nigerians also have the Nigerian dream. Because this is a gentleman that has risen from a very humble background. And here is, he is today, having gone through various hierarchy in the political terrain, even as vice president of this country, and today the presidential candidate of PDP. So we have learned a lot. So this book teaches a lot of lessons to every Nigerian to the men, to the women, to the youth, to the adults. We all have lessons to learn from this biography. Because we have our own Nigerian dream. I am here today, I will be very brief. I'm standing in as mother of the day. On behalf of every mother in Nigeria, I say congratulations, Your Excellency, for this wonderful event. On behalf of all PDP women, sir, I say congratulations a second time to you. And sir, there is something very significant we have not realized today. Today, INEC has lifted the ban for campaigns to start. And what are we seeing? You are starting your campaign with the launch or presentation of three books. And what does that tell us? It tells us how serious-minded you are. It tells us how much you love education. So that is the significance of this launch. Coming on a significant day, that INEC lifted the curtain for campaign. So your message to Nigerians is, you are a very serious person that takes education very seriously. And sir, I believe that by the time you get on board, you are not only going to focus on education, you are going to focus your attention on all aspects of development in Nigeria and you are going to carry the women along, especially PDP women. Thank you very much, sir. We believe in you. You are going to be there, and we are going to be with you in the mighty name of God. Once again, congratulations, sir. Thank you. OK. Thank you so very much. Uh Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.